ready for another speed review. So today it's a themed speed review video where I'm going to be updating you on everything new that I tried and picked up during the Sephora savings event. I believe I had three separate haul videos, so I have everything right here in front of me. Now I'm not including the things that I replenished, so things that I tried before, reviewed before, just need a backup sub. Not including the hair stuff either because I haven't tried them yet. I have, I've been out of town, I just got back from LA, so I have not blow dried my hair to try that. But I'll keep you guys updated if I notice any uh, game changing or hair trashing happening. But let's go ahead and get into the makeup. A lot of this I feel like I've been testing for weeks now. Enough so that I've talked about them in multiple videos. Starting off with the first one, which by the way, if you don't know Speed Reviews, basically this is where I collect a bunch of products for one video and I share my thoughts after thoroughly testing these products in different ways with different products. So these are reviews after actually using these multiple times. So the first one is the Super Goop Glow Screen, which I have absolutely fallen in love with. I've literally done a dedicated short on this about how much I love this, how much this is the product of the summer for me because it gives you SPF. It also leaves a very pretty glow to the skin. For me, I don't find that it pills up. It also feels very hydrating. It's kind of that all-in-one and it feels really lightweight as well. It doesn't weigh my makeup down. Now, I will say I've had a lot of you share that this product did not work for you. Maybe it got too oily. Maybe it pilled up. Maybe, you know, a lot of you said that it's not strong enough as an SPF and it's necessary for you to use another SPF with it. So do keep in mind that not everybody had as positive of an experience as me, but I really, really, really like this. So my skin definitely approves of this. Next up from Freck Beauty, this one I also made a short on. This is the Rich Bish Priming Serum, and this one is really strange because it will literally stretch out. I believe there's an ingredient, they actually commented on my TikTok, it's like snail something or other that makes it stretch, but it's not sticky by any means. It's actually very hydrating. It applies really smooth to the skin. I very much like this primer. If you like a good hydrating primer, this is beautiful on the skin. It leaves a pretty glow behind as well. And honestly, it's just kind of fun to apply. So I've enjoyed this a lot. I recommend this if you have dry skin. Concealer. I picked up two during the sale. The first one is from Huda Beauty. This is the Glowish Bright Light Sheer Concealer. Honestly, not the biggest fan of this. Now, it is a little too dark for me, so the light medium shade did not work out for me. The consistency of it, it's very glowy. It has a lighter coverage. I think I would definitely like this more had it been in my shade, but still, it's not one that I felt the need to buy in the correct shade because it's not my favorite concealer. It is like a skin tint in concealer form. I have a lot of other products that perform similar to this. This one is a little bit more glowy than what I'm typically used to. The good drugstore version of this, I would say, is the Physician's Formula one that I talked about recently. They have one that has very light coverage like this and is glowy, and since they have that Physician's Formula, I don't feel the need to have this one. So it's okay, but I'm not in love with it. I don't even know that I really like it, but it's not bad, but just know you're getting very little coverage and it's very reflective against light. On the contrary, I love this Valentino Beauty Concealer. So I don't even think it's called Valentino Beauty. It's very Valentino, but it's Valentino's beauty brand. <laughs> so this one I also bought in a shade too dark. So I started off with the shade MN2, but I liked it so much that I wanted to keep the darker shade so I can use it on my skin for spot concealing. And I wanted to buy a lighter shade in it as well to do a little bit of brightening. So where I did not want to buy a lighter shade of the Huda Beauty, I wanted to buy the lighter shade of this. The finish of it is really skin-like. It gets a very nice medium coverage. It blends like butter, very seamless application into the skin. It doesn't look too heavy. It doesn't look too drying. To me, this is a great everyday concealer. It's one of my new favorites. I'm not gonna say it's like a top fiver on my all-time favorite concealer list, but in terms of new concealers that I've tried, this is one of my favorites. I think it is so stunning. It's not gonna give full coverage, so keep that in mind, but it does blend seamlessly into the skin and really perfects it while giving a really healthy, hydrated look. So I'm very much enjoying this still. 
I also picked up another product from Freck Beauty. This is the Face Hack Precision Sculpting Bronzer in the shade Medium. And it says this is for neutral warm undertones. Honestly, I think it's really, really tiny for the price that I paid. It's, I don't know, it's just pretty expensive for how a small amount of product that you can get. You now the way that it blends onto the skin is really nice, very malleable. For me, I'm not a huge of a fan of, a, of the tone of this. It's very, very warm, which I'm not going to knock it for the tone, but just know it's going to bronze, but it's definitely not going to contour. It's not a product that I see myself reaching for for every day. I prefer my bronzer shades to typically have a little bit more coolness to it. So it's not my preferred shade, but the formula does blend up very easily. I think it's kind of small as well. It's going to be one of those products in my collection where, you know, it's not bad, but I'm also not going to reach for it over any of my favorites. Same thing kind of goes for this Glossier Solar Paint Luminous Bronzer Cream. I like this. I don't love it. Again, I'm not reaching for this over my favorites. It has a little bit more of a red undertone compared to the Freck Beauty. It blends in beautifully. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about it, but I again, I feel like the colors were kind of weird in this range just all together. Um, it also has like a slight metallic finish, which if you have wrinkles and stuff like that, and fine lines on the skin, that can emphasize it. It's not a bad product, but again, not a great product. It's a product that I find myself to reach for if I'm using other Glossier products because when I do my makeup, I think of it holistically. Like if I'm using a lot of a certain brand, I'll reach for this because in my head, it's supposed to work better with those products. But I don't see myself after this reaching for it too often. Something that I do love, love, love is for Makeup Forever. And I love this way more than I thought it was going to. This is the HD Skin face sculpting palette and this one is intimidating when I saw this I was like I don't know how much I'm gonna reach for this this kind of catches me more for makeup artists and I'm not actively taking clients right now so I didn't think I was gonna love this as much as I did because I also have like the one that has the blush and the foundation and stuff like that and I don't reach for it that often but I've been using this a lot I love a good sculptor I love a good brightener and I've been very much enjoying this for kind of customizing my face color so if I need brightness in a certain area, I'll reach for this. And I can be using any other products. Like, I don't need to just use this. But if I want to add some definition and brightness to my face, I'll reach for this. This even has a beautiful cream highlight formulation, which I'm normally not a fan of, but the quality in here is really nice. So I also did a TikTok and short form video of how to use this and how I like to use this. I definitely recommend checking that out if you want to see it in action from me. It's a very easy, blendable product, but I've just liked it for the convenience of kind of touching up and adding those extra finishing details to make my makeup look complete. I don't want to say it's necessarily worth $85. This is a very expensive palette. Something that can do similar is the e.l.f. Contour Quad if you don't want to spend $85. But I did spend my money on this and I did end up very much enjoying it and I can see myself continuing to use this down the road. Lots of cream blushes were purchased during this period. So I got the shade Dawn in the Glossier cloud paint. This is much more orange than I normally go for. It's definitely a shade that I need to pair with the correct colors in order for this to work. Very, very pigmented. This is going to work great for medium to deeper complexions as well. It blends in beautifully. It is a gorgeous formula. Not my go-to for color, but it is something unique to my collection. So I haven't reached for this a ton because the orange is a bit intimidating to me, but I can see myself using this a lot more over the summer. The formula is gorgeous. Another one that I tried that was a little out of my comfort zone color-wise is from Say. This is a dew blush in the shade Poppy. Interesting, I found that it stained my cheek today. You'll see I kind of struggled to blend it out. So I actually ended up taking my makeup off to try the next blushes and this stained my skin after I took my makeup off. It's kind of a beautiful hot pink corally orange shade. I do recommend so that it doesn't stain as much to kind of, I know you're letting air enter it, but mix it up a little bit, shake it up a little bit so that it's not going to stay in the cheek and you'll get more of an even blend that way. But yeah, I did not mix it and it stained. It was a little harder to blend. So today was oddly enough the first negative experience that I had with this. I've had a lot of fun with it. Otherwise, I found it very easy to blend. The color itself is intimidating, so I always make sure to use a lighter amount. But yeah, mix it up. It was weird. It, it had been sitting while I was on vacation this last week, and I think... 
like the pigment must have separated from, I don't know, very odd performance today, but for the most part, I've still been very much enjoying this. And then the last cream blushes purchased were from Rare Beauty. They launched two new of these liquid blush formulas. Well, not formulas, colors. So Worth is a little bit more rosy and then Virtue is a little bit more warm. Still the same formula from Rare Beauty. So if you like these, you will enjoy them. They do blend quite seamlessly into the skin if you don't over apply. If you do have a deeper complexion, this is great because you can get a lot of pigment with these. I would say these are not my number one favorite liquid blush formulas, but they definitely have grown on me over time. And I see why people like them because they do look quite seamless on the skin. I purchased this Glossier Halo Scope Do Effect Highlighter in the shade Quartz, kind of on a whim because I was just in the phase of wanting to try as much as I could from Glossier, and I typically don't like stick highlighters. This one is okay, it doesn't break up anything underneath. It actually feels quite hydrating on the skin, so I like this a lot more than a lot of other cream highlighters that I've tried in the past. However, this is very, very subtle to the point where a lot of times I find it kind of pointless. Because a glowy base is so trendy right now, I find that whenever I have a glowy base or glowy products, they are more glowy than this product. Like This product is better if you have more of a matte base on because it's very, very, very natural. So there's been a lot of occasions where this hasn't shown up. So I do like the consistency of it. I do like how hydrating it is. I like how it applies, which is more than I can say for a lot of other cream highlighters that I've tried, but it's missing a little bit of impact here. Okay, we're going into three new powders that I've tried. So this is a tried and true formulation for me. I just picked it up in a new shade. So this is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Blue Setting Powder, and I picked it up in the shade Cherry Blossom Cake, which is a really light pink shade. I find that on my skin tone, the pink doesn't show through as much. It just is a nice brightener, and so why a lot of people have been using this type of shade is because the pink brightens the skin. This is not gonna work great for every skin tone. I like how on myself it isn't too pink. I was a little worried about that, but it's still that really great Huda Beauty formula that quite frankly, makes my pores disappear. This is one of the most smoothing powders on the market. I highly recommend it in any shade that's gonna work for you. And then for pressed powder, I've been using this Laura Mercier Real Flawless Luminous Perfecting, I feel like I'm like reading it like this, Real Flawless Luminous Perfecting Translucent Pressed Powder. <laughs> so this I like after setting my makeup, so I'll put down my favorite kind of blurring powder the Huda Beauty, and then I use this to set the rest of my makeup because it does have a very subtle sheen to it, which I find looks really natural on the skin. So this is a great powder to set the skin if you want to keep the integrity of the finish of the product that you have underneath it. It will mattify it just a little bit, but if you look in the pan, you can see that shine. It doesn't show through in a way that's unflattering on the skin or emphasizes, you know, pores and stuff like that but it does just enough to give the skin life without making it look worse. So I've enjoyed this a lot. I think this is a really nice powder. And then the last powder that I have is from Makeup Forever. This is the HD Skin Twist and Light Powder. Personally, I've decided I'm not a fan of this. So this one is interesting from packaging to concept itself. It has three different colors, a yellow, a blue, and a pinky powder, which is supposed to kind of color correct. Kind of gimmicky if you ask me. And then the powder itself, it's weird because you have to twist it to get the perfect amount of powder out. So the powder itself, it has a weird sheen to it, which does not, in my opinion, look very flattering all over the skin. It is so shiny that I literally will use it as a highlighter. I think the demo is gonna show that. I put it all over my face. I even set my under eyes with it the first time I used it and I was like, Oh no, that does not look good. So I don't really care for that powder. It just, it's not very flattering on the skin unless you use it as a highlight, which in that case, I probably would just use an actual highlight, a product intended to be used that way because there really is nothing that special about it. 
Then I got a powder blush from Armani Beauty. This is the new Luminous Silk Glow Blush Formula, which was recommended by you guys. And I got it in the shade 52, of course, which is this electric pink color. And this is gorgeous. This is prettier than the very popular Dior pink blush, which I do love as well. But this one is going to be more flattering on more skin tones because it's less pale and it has less of a blue base to it. So it's just going to flatter a lot more skin tones. It's a beautiful formula. Very, very, very soft focus, glowy kind of effect but super duper subtle very easy to apply and a gorgeous color I don't know if I'm gonna run to get other colors just because the sides of my collection would be a little crazy if you know what I mean but I think it's a beautiful formula I see what you guys are talking about very very pricey but was worth it with the 20% discount moving on to eyes the first product that I have is from Valentino this is the dream dust multi reflective eye glitter I got mine in the shade 03 unfortunately I think I I wasted my money on this. I saw it and I was pretty much just like, ooh, glitter. But functionality, I don't like that it's in the pot. I find it hard to get the product out, especially if you have false nails. The glitter is a little too chunky and it applies chunky on the eyelid. You absolutely, one, need to use a glitter glue because it separates on the eyelid and two, have a matching eye color underneath because it's chunky it spreads out it's not super chunky but it doesn't apply really smooth like i was hoping that it would onto the eyelid it doesn't wear well you can get pretty looks with it i did a demo with this i think i it was called like playing with my new sephora makeup and i use this and it just it's not good. I have other glittery eye products that I would use over this. Now, eyeshadows. I ended up picking up three palettes over the course of this sale. So the first one is on my eyes. This is the Dominique Cosmetics Essential Palette. This was my favorite palette that I ended up trying last month. So for today's look, it's really, really simple what I did. I only used three colors. I started off with this matte shade Positivity, and I applied it underneath my brow bone just to brighten and highlight. Then I used the shade Mayamo, which is this mauve color, and kind of dusty rose. I applied it to the outer corner and then in my crease as well. Kept the look really soft. Then I used my finger into the shade Grateful right here and just applied it all over the eyelid and I got a really simple, pretty mauve purpley, pinky look. I love this palette. I think the quality is great. Uh, the shimmers are very reflective on the eyelid. The mattes are easy to blend. They do lack a little bit of pigment, so you do have to build them up. I broke the black, which is unfortunate, and I do wish this had a really dark brown, but I love the colors in here, and I love the everyday looks that I am able to get with this palette, so I really enjoyed it. I also have the Pat McGrath Labs Mini Eyeshadow Palette in Sublime Smoke. This was great. I went to LA last week, and this was the only eyeshadow palette that I brought. I really like it because it's a curation of all the colors you're going to need to complete one eye look. I already had all of these shades in my main collection, but you know the size of Pat McGrath palette. I love that this one was so tiny and I would use this as eyeliner. This is the crease color. I'd switch around my lid colors. Maybe I'd deepen up with this. The quality was really nice. It's really cute and tiny. Fabulous for travel. Loved it. And then I also picked up the Glossier Monochromes Essential Eye Trio in the shade Teak. I kept seeing these in ads and I thought it looked so pretty. It's not as pretty as it looked in the ads. I'm not going to lie. It still is a nice palette. A little underwhelming. This doesn't have a lot of pigment to it. This one, while smooth, a little underwhelming. And this one is very pretty, but the ads made it look like it was more reflective than it actually was. So I feel slightly bamboozled by the ads. It's still a very nice palette on its own, very easy to blend, but it looked immaculate on the girls that were demoing it. And it, it, looked, it looked fine on me. But I was like, why is it not making me as beautiful as these girls? <laughs> Okay, now lips. I picked up two products from LYS Beauty. The first one is the lip pencil in the shade Lavish, which is a really nice everyday warmish, but still kind of cool taupey color as a lip liner. I really like this formula. It's not too waxy, it's not too dry, it's not too creamy, it's that perfect in between. I like that it's a sharpenable pencil, just a really nice solid lip pencil. And then the lipstick, I like it because it's really, really slim. So this is 
the shade Dreamer. It's quite creamy on the lips. It applies very, very smooth. Overall, I really like LYS a lot because it's one of the more affordable brands at Sephora. And I thought that these two made a beautiful combo. They were very comfortable on the lips. So a really nice, more affordable side of Sephora to shop for. I like these. I think they're very, very high quality. I like how slender both of the products are. They feel great to apply. Very nice formula. I don't have anything bad to say about these and really great colors. Another lip liner that I picked up was from Refai. This is the Lip Sculpt in the shade Taupe. I don't like the packaging. It's not slender at all. <laughs> the shade Taupe is less cool toned than I thought it was going to be and it's a little bit on the light side. Nonetheless, it's a very nice, smooth, easy application. Don't have anything bad to say about it. Not wowed by it. Not wowed by the longevity. But it's not bad at all. It's just kind of there, you know? I probably wouldn't pick up another color, but I'm not mad that I picked up one color. And this was an accidental purchase. I meant to pick up the liquid lipstick, but I still like the color, so I held on to it. This is from House Labs. This is the Le Monster Lip Crown in the shade Blush Matte. I knew I didn't love this formula to begin with. It's a little drying on the lips. It does emphasize lines and dryness, but it's a pretty color if you pair it with the correct lip products to counterbalance the dryness of it. It's going to end up being fine. It's a smooth application. It's a beautiful color. It's fine. It, you know, I'm not overjoyed that I ended up with this, but I'm not upset. That's why I kept it in the first place. It's been a nice everyday color for me. And then I picked up the Dior Lip Glow Oil in Cherry Oil. I wanted to go for the darkest color to get the biggest impact on my lips. Unfortunately, this might as well be clear, which is not what I was hoping for, which was my mistake. I should have swatched it in store. But sometimes the testers, even if I just use them on my hand, I'm like, I don't know who touched this. Especially with something so sticky like this and thick. But yeah. It ended up being pretty clear. I still love the feel of this on my lips, but the color did disappoint a bit. Now the last things that I picked up that I wanted to share with you, you guys know I've picked up these Sephora favorite kits. I think they're the best value. Um, I just wanted to share some newer products in each of these that I've discovered. So from this one, I traveled with the Necessaire Body Lotion. It was really, really nice. The Missing Person Fleur Perfume. Not as big of a fan of the scent of it. Lawless Forget the Filler, I've tried this before. It's so cute and tiny, I brought it with me to travel. This new color of the rose ink was gorgeous. I didn't try this, but I already know I love this. And the lipstick was great. Then in the $48 kit, the Vacay All Day, mini brow gel I brought on vacation with me. I'm still testing the Drunk Elephant. I used it wrong the first time. I think it's better when mixing with a moisturizer. I actually used the Waterproof Better Than Sex Mascara from Too Faced, and it was quite nice. I brought it with me on vacation. We have a mini version of the super group that I talked about. Love this makeup by Mario formula that I tried for the first time. Stunning. And Freck OG, I still gotta practice. I'm not very good at applying it, but both of those were 100% worth it. I actually pulled a bunch of the little pieces from there for when I traveled last week because they're so tiny, so I used a bunch of minis from those. So those well worth the money. But overall, you guys, that's all the new makeup that I tested from my Sephora pickup. Lots of new products and lots of opinions as always. So I hope you guys enjoyed the speed reviews and found it helpful. If you tried any of these products down below, feel free to share your opinion. I love getting when you agree with me and I also like it when you disagree with me because then I was able to share useful information about this even though I loved it. A lot of people didn't. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like it and subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. Was that English? Bye guys, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.